Hello and welcome to our astrology series where we begin to look at how astrology, um, how it really works and how it shapes the map of the universe on every vibratory scale, whether it be the body, um, social structures, uh, a city, um, the universe around us. But to do that, we need to break each element down. But before we go into the separate details of it, I would like to look at a little piece of history. Um, for the astrology. We covered uh, a general topic on the introduction, however, we, I feel it's extremely beneficial to have a tool to use that we can relate back to, to keep um, everything kind of, um, the best way to say it is, in one diagrammatical concept or one form that we can go back to and put things in a more visual uh, representation. And the one we're going to use is um, the Kabbalah or the Tree of Life. Now, the reason why this is important is because it is a map of the solar system um, and the blueprint of the universe. And if you've looked at the blueprint of the universe series, um, it's divided into lessons, each lesson with a number which describes one aspect of the Tree of Life or one part of it. But each of the planets we're going to look at um, also relate to one of each one of these separate pieces of um, kind of symbolism on the tree of life for the Kabbalah, and so it goes at hand in hand really. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking out those videos as well. But for now, we, we we can do it separately because that wasn't the idea of the planets wasn't actually mentioned in the blueprint series intentionally. Um, so when we look at the Kabbalah itself, it was created, um, or well, it was generated um, by King Solomon um, after he took over from his father, King David, in Jerusalem. And this was after, um, so that was the start of real Judaism. Um, and when that, when when the system of the Jewish people was created, uh, but we have to remember that before that, um, you know, the people were actually Hebrews. Uh, that came from Egypt. We'll look at that in a second, briefly, without going into too much detail. Um, but the Kabbalah itself is a tree of life, or a diagram, um, that has ten points to it, um, specifically nine, because we use, it's actually got a zero and a ten, but they're the same thing, and it represents the universe itself, which is like the entirety of the system. So for the purpose of this, really, ten and zero will represent the zodiac in its entirety, but we won't, won't worry about that right now. So the other nine positions or points all represent um, planets, um, and this is quite well known, but also not well known to some people as well. It's kind of one of those 50-50 splits of people that get it and people that don't, um, and astrology um, doesn't necessarily uh, open that fact. However, people in, that listen to the ballad don't also relate it to the planets, it's the people in between that do, so you've got kind of a broader spectrum that look at both sides. And it's not really a hidden secret, you can find this on online quite easily if you type in the Kabbalah and planets, it gives you a list of which one relates to which planet. However, what is interesting is, um, it's obviously the, the position of the planets um, on the Tree of Life, it does actually reflect the solar system. And what's more interesting is that, obviously when it was created then, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, many years before um, before Christ was um, around, or the, you know, zero AD, when they didn't have the necessary tools to look at certain planets, because we know that only seven planets are visible in the sky with the naked eye, and even that's a, a pretty stretch, you need to know exactly what you're looking for, and you need to have been shown this. So, for them to then have obviously recognised that the other three planets were in the solar system is quite a remarkable feat. Now, the key here is, but we didn't actually know that, and it's a, again, it's a general misconception because we forget to look at what people knew in time and we look at it at what we see it as from now. And what they discovered was, obviously, when King David was around and he made the Star of David, the Star of David is a simpler form of the Kabbalah, which actually just gives the seven. The six points of the star and then the seven point in the middle being the sun or the earth, which 
we'll see in a second. Um, it wasn't later that Solomon then added the other parts to the um, Kabbalah. But what's more interesting is um, that he didn't give them planetary names as such. Uh, he did the seven, but not the others. He just left them blank. But he knew that there were certain aspects or certain anomalies that happened at certain periods of time that didn't weren't explained by the other seven and kind of behaved in certain ways to allow him to have these other three points um, that weren't visible by the naked eye and he knew they were there because of a cause and effect situation and so he put the spaces in it wasn't until later on when we discovered things like the telescope or um, ways of pla uh, looking into the heavens a little bit more accurately. For example, like um, the, the looking glass was created um, in the Renaissance period. But these, were, these missing elements were named and put into the solar system and were then added into the blank positions of the Kabbalah later on. So. It's extremely important we know that to get that kind of misconception out of the way that actually, yes, he was aware that there was these spaces, these effects or these planetary bodies in the world because he'd seen it or understood it in other vibrational levels such as the human body, the human mind um, and, and the world around him. And he also saw that these effects happened in the universe, in the solar system. But he could not see these bodies, so he put these blank spaces in to say, well, these are the positions um, which have effects and they will be revealed later, which they were, so it's a form of foresight. And so those missing planets were put into the Kabbalah in the right positions later on, which incidentally linked exactly to the order of the planets in the solar system. Moving outwards, it was the furthest ones away, later three, but weren't visible but then also applied to the first three spots in the Kabbalah. Um, this happened actually again later on with, um, um, oh let me think about this, I think it was called um, Uranian astrology where uh, it was a, a more detailed thing of looking at the asteroids and kind of comets and giving them names rather than the uh, planets which are much smaller and in those times when that system was created equally when they were looking at astrology and certain events happened at certain times at certain periods repeatedly on a consistent cycle the individual who came up with the Uranian um, astrology, it's not to do with the place it's to do with the planet and uh, obviously Uranus where he knew these events were happening and so forth, something must exist in the solar system around because it behaved in the same way as other comets and other asteroids did but he could not see it so he had these blank spaces that he gave names to and it was later on that the asteroids in question were found when the appropriate um, scientific equipment was available and these names of missing spaces were given to those asteroids so again it happens we have um, it's like the theory side where something must exist because these results are constantly occurring repeatedly and frequently in the same fashion in the same place but we don't have the equipment to monitor it and it's the same with quantum physics often we can't see or don't have the equipment to explain things like string theory but we know it happens and it's from a cause and effect point of view so that's part of why the Kabbalah is so important because it obviously worked even without the concept of um, knowing the planets were out there, specifically the last three. So it does work and it does have extremely accurate um, kind of uses, uh, but equally at the time we must also accept that we were limited by the science of the time. Back then. So let's just take that a step back then. So we look at the Kabbalah um, and we see the position of the planets. Um, the numbers of the um, positions on the Tree of Life give a direct um, map of the solar system, all the way from 1 to, to 9 um, in order. However, what isn't true is that the Sun, which is given the number 6 position, is actually um, the planet Earth and not the Sun. 
because what we need to look at is when we look at astrology there's obviously two types where the planet is the center of the attention or the sun is the center of the attention obviously in the solar system the sun is the center of the attention being in the center of the solar system however when we're looking at the effects of the planet or the solar system on the human body on earth then we must use earth as the um, focus of study which is actually why originally um, there was two types of um, astrology or solar systems because we all know that um, during uh, the Renaissance period Copernicus obviously said actually now the earth revolves around the sun yes but they actually didn't know that in previous times they knew that all the planets revolved around the sun because the Kabbalah puts the sun in the center of the tree of life and all the other planets rotate around it however if we put them in order coming away from the single point which would be the kind of uh, shells of the um, solar system moving outwards planet by planet away from the sun then we get a different order where actually earth is number six or the position of the sun which is now the center so one diagram actually represents both versions of the solar system in history now the reason the earth-centered system was taken in like the greek period the hellenistic uh, version is because we were trying to relate it back to humankind everything related back to humankind which meant humankind was the perceptual center of existence which is fine it's not a true representation of physics but when we're looking at how things affect certain objects and concepts the center of the affected body must always be in the center in your life ego puts the human being in the center you are at the center of your life even though we know you are not you are moving around the sun just like everybody else but it's that perceived center of reality and the kabbalah does that in both ways it puts the sun at the center in one way of looking at the, the diagram but when we look at it in number order numerical order from one to ten we actually find that six is the sun, is the planet earth and earth is the center of our understanding and therefore can be placed at the center of the system so when we look at the kabbalah the sun and the earth are interchangeable in terms of um, affecting qualities it's very important to look at when we move on um, and then, yeah, so basically all the planets or the um, locations on the Kabbalah are representation of planets. And it actually very accurately um, tells us how each planet behaves or affects us on planet Earth as a human body because of various qualities, which we'll look at individually as we move on. But what's also then important is we need to look at where that came from, because, yeah, we saw that it came from David, who created the Star of David representing the Seven. However... We have to remember that Judaism was born from the Hebrews and the Hebrews were actually part, it wasn't actually just the Hebrews that moved from Egypt, it was a combination of the Hyksos people and the Hyksos people were a blend of Hebrews from um, Mesopotamia and Egyptians from Egypt that had begun to unify under um, King um, uh, Akhenaten, who started to blend the two systems together of the Egyptian um, and the mysticism and the Egyptian system of understanding and the Hebrew system of understanding brought by Abraham and it created the Hyksos people and this new concept of um, Aten or Akhenaten uh, from, from him and it's that system that moved and developed over time and when settled in Israel created um, Judaism and so the knowledge that was passed on to create the Kabbalah is a union of both Egyptian and Hebrew methods of thinking and that's why we have words and symbols because the Egyptians spoke in symbols and pictures and images whereas the Hebrews used sounds and words and um, text and then you unify the two together and you get the Kabbalah, which is a representation of um, both. Because when we look at the Kabbalah as a whole, it's got images and letters and sounds all merged together to create a complete map of the universe. 
and that's what the tarot is. The tarot is Egyptian by nature, but we've added, uh, in more modern sense, the words to it to understand it. And that's something we'll look at in the tarot system. Um, so yeah, so that's why it's so important um, to us, and why astrology can be linked to the Kabbalah in a very detailed and like for like manner. So we'll constantly refer back to that through this video. So during this video, I've put up images of various forms of the Kabbalah and tree of life and um, images that relate to it. So um, please find the one that relates to you and keep it on hand when you look at these videos because it's extremely important because it gives you a diagrammatical relationship between the aspects we're going to discuss. So I hope you've enjoyed. I hope it's opened some doorways and I hope it's closed some ones that perhaps were, shouldn't have been open in the first place and um, yeah so we're open to discussion and uh, please like share and follow and obviously leave a comment if there's anything else you want to discuss about that we will do a full series on the Kabbalah at some point um, but uh, time constraints mean we can only do one system at a time so uh, bear with us and we will get there but for now let's uh, look at astrology and how it works so thank you very much and goodbye Hello and welcome to our astrology series where we begin to look at how astrology, um, how it really works and how it shapes the map of the universe on every vibratory scale, whether it be the body, um, social structures, uh, a city, um, the universe around us. But to do that, we need to break each element down. But before we go into the separate details of it, I would like to look at a little piece of history. Um, for the astrology. We covered a, a general topic on the introduction, however, we, I feel it's extremely beneficial to have a tool to use that we can relate back to, to keep um, everything kind of, um, the best way to say it is, in one diagrammatical concept or one form that we can go back to and put things in a more visual uh, representation. And the one we're going to